compensate for the deficiencies of his senses, but no matter what instrument he uses, at some point, he reached the edge of certainty beyond which conscious knowledge cannot pass. Has anybody here never eaten kiwi in your life? You never ate a kiwi? So the first time you ever eat a kiwi in your life, you may not notice, you may not know that, but the first time you eat kiwi, you don't taste it. You eat that fruit and you look at it and you go, why doesn't it taste like anything? Now if you've eaten it many times, you don't realize that. But the very first time you eat it, your taste buds did not know that quality of taste. So you were not aware of that your taste bud didn't realize it which means your nerve system didn't know how to transmit that actual taste to your brain so you could interpret that however the second time you ate it because now it's such a popular fruit you have one in every corner you're like hmm it's kind of lemony and you know kind of like a star fruit inside and da 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 so it's like oh i start to recognize that taste by the third time you eat it, you know what it is. You don't need your eyes open anymore. And when you taste it, you know what a kiwi tastes like. You can go through a blindfolded test and you will know what it tastes like. That's exactly what he's talking about here. So as we experience situations, sensations, new information, new details, new idea, even studying history, which are things that already happened before, is how we get a greater, however not complete, picture of anything. And just to complete that thought, we know that every story has three sides, right? Side A, side B, and the real truth. So remember that while we talk. So today we're going to talk a little bit about progress and evolution. What is one? What's the other? We're going to talk a little bit about law of progress, which has absolutely everything to do with the topic at hand. We're going to talk a little bit about education and the view of some very smart people about education. We're going to talk a little bit about the new era. And if we have time, and that will depend, I'll go deeper into the techniques or lighter onto the techniques. So progress and evolution. What is the difference between progress and evolution? And if you're an SDA student, you should know this by heart. I don't need to tell you. However, I need to make a pre, you know, this point before I go forward so everybody understands. The progress is the motion that propels being forward. So in order for you to evolve, you have to go through a series of progresses. You tasted the fruit once, didn't taste like anything. You tasted the fruit a second time and it was kind of lemony. Then you tasted the fruit a third time and you identified it. So that is the progress for understanding what kiwi tastes like. Evolution is the fourth day when you try the fruit and you already know what it is. You understand the difference? It kind of sounds like the same if you think about progress and if you think about evolution but they are complementary and not exactly the same thing. So evolution is the constant or the gradual transition from one state to another when you accomplish that knowledge. Uh, just if you are not aware of how many God's laws are out there, there's a whole bunch of them. And I like to use the word intertwine, and I hope everybody knows what that means. It's like mingled, mixed in, and kind of like all tangled in together. You can't go to one law and, not, and ignore all the other 10 laws, as there are 11. But today we are going to focus on the law of progress. So we just got to remember that there are many out there that, that we will be touching on as well. So the law of progress talks about nature in its own primitive state. Civilization is incompatible with the state. Oh, it's incompatible with the stage of nature because nature is normally on a more primitive state than humanity, which is always evolving. Correct. And the law of nature will contribute with the progress of the human race. Strange. 
a part that doesn't really evolve contribute to the evolution. <laughs> See how everything is really intertwined, interconnected? Mankind must progress continuously. Remember, learn something new every day and cannot return to the state of infancy. So if we are all children today, from here we are going to, going to grow and become better adults. We'll never become babies again as spirits. And the spirits are set out to progress because it's God's will. Although we may think that in this lifetime, my uncle, my nephew, my cousin, my third generation stop brother decided to go south and do something really wrong. He became an armed robber in a bank or something. And I'm thinking, oh my God, he was such a great student and he had everything to be grain. And then he became a robber, just to be very extreme. He didn't go back. He's just misusing this time's incarnation. When he restarts, which means when he accomplishes this lifetime progress and his time to disincarnate, and he comes back, he will have the same potential to be a great kid, to become a great adult, if he wishes to take that choice. And was the human race primitive at one point? Can we think about that? Can we relate to that? caveman we still know about the indians they still live kind of like the caveman right so although we all spirits and we all progressing we can see how much have a human race as a whole progressed in 2015. so what is education and you know when you're going to talk about something so important as education you gotta go and ask people that know about that right I may have my opinions of what education is, but Bezerra tells us that a spiritually educated child will be an adult that will raise oneself, itself, towards future happiness. Why? It has the tools, right? A spiritually educated child is different than a child that never came to church or to the centro or that got a relationship with God. It doesn't have the tools that are necessary in order to make the right choices when it becomes an adult. And in these transition years that separate us from the new millennium on earth, it is essential to embrace with commitment and hard work the tasks of evangel evangelization in the children's soul. So efficient in love and wisdom. I mean, so deficient. I'm like, efficient? No. So deficient in love and wisdom. wisdom. However, receptive and conductive to the new teachings. So you may be there sitting and say, I don't have children. I don't have nobody. Remember examples to others. Doesn't matter if they're older or younger than you. And this, with the same enthusiasm and promptness with which a farmer wakes up early to cultivate the soil, preparing the sowing of his hopes for an abundant harvest months to come. Now, this is the guy is doing the work, and that's what he wishes. And you're doing the work. It's not just wishing. You're doing both, right? You're doing the work and you're wishing. If the harvest is not abundant, is it his fault? No, it just may be a situation that we go through. However, if we don't prepare, we don't wish, and we don't do the work that is necessary for an abundant harvest, it ain't going to happen at all. It just doesn't happen by chance. It needs all those elements. <laughs> Then you keep on asking, you know, keep, let's see what Joanna has to say about that. So the spiritual education for children and youth is of utmost, I love that word, importance. As the children of today will be the new humanity of tomorrow. Shouldn't that be obvious? As the children of today will be the humanity of tomorrow. The youth of today will be called upon to perform tasks and meet the commitment whose results depend on training that they will be given from now. 
So I want you to think about 20 years ago. Your life today, your life 20 years ago. No internet, no cell phones, right? Is it different? Yes. So 20 years ago when we were all in kindergarten, because we're all about 22, right? So <laughs> 25, right? So uh, 20 years ago when we were all in kindergarten, how could our parents and our teachers prepare us for the internet and cell phone world that they had no idea was coming? They had no idea. However, they had to give the best education they possibly could with the best intentions and the best technology. Don't try to downplay it. In technology, I'm not just talking about computer technology. I'm talking about all the educational tools there are to increase the brain faculties of the child. So when somebody teaches, they have to teach at the top level because what's coming 20 years from now is so much more complex than what we have today. So the best we can do now for them in the future is still little for what they're going to face, but it's the stepping stones to get there. And then she also says that the higher spirits reincarnate to hasten the kingdom of God. And those higher spirits are going to come from us, from the children that come from us, from the adults that we're trying to enlighten. Remember, God says that we, we walk this way, right? There's always somebody here to enlighten us at the same time that we're here to enlighten somebody else. But that doesn't mean that this person is older and this person is younger. Sometimes we will learn from a five-year-old and we'll be helping somebody that's 50, 60, or 70 years old. And the same hand. The age is not a, a, a determination of who you learn or who you teach to or from. And then I thought it was something very interesting. They have a department in Brazil that's much older, as we all know that, if I, uh, I mean, spiritism in Brazil has been much more solid than it has been here in America for many more years. So in the 10th anniversary of the permanent campaign of uh, Spiritist Youth Evangelization, there was a communication from the spirit of Ariel that said, the Spiritist Evangelization of children and youth represents the progress of mankind. The appeal of Jesus that still echoes almost painfully in our souls. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So we have many bad examples, and we used to have very few good examples. Now we have choices, right? We can choose on our little TV in the morning, channel 7, I want to bleed the channel, so you can see the blood coming out of the TV, or you can choose channel 10 or NBC, which in most of the TVs is channel 6, where it's a much lighter version of the same news. Whose choice is what the channel they're watching? Ours. So the good example comes even from what we source our news information. All the way through what seeps through the children. Because they hear. You think they're not paying attention because they're in the little thing and then they lift their head and says, Oh, they killed the three people? Huh? <laughs> right? Interesting. And then 10 years later, 1996, so you see it's, you know, coming up to 10 years more in a couple, in next year. Uh, our friend Francisco Tiersing said, why is that a campaign of such magnitude with so many possibilities in the field of moral transformation of men find so many difficulties to be held? All human dignity proposal meets resistance in those who delight in error. You know, the parents that says, oh, you know what, I'm going to wait. My child is only seven, and when it becomes 14, it will decide what religion it is, and then I'll start taking them in. Don't tell me that. 
because you know I will tell you then you know what go fetch another religion because you're not sure you're in the right one because if you were sure that you are at the right place at the right time why would you not bring your children here so reacting against the factors that promote the freedom receive a violent attack from the antagonism of the progress brandishing the weapons of resentment and malice in order to hinder an advancement so you know that little story that we always hear about the little bad spirits are out there to try to stop our work this shows they are and the only people that can prevent that from happening is us we keep our heads straight screwed on right and they'll be fine but is us is our choices that makes the entire difference so what is education it's a permanent progress of betterment of the spirit progress not evolution progress awakening its potential potentialities its virtues the better qualities we can have on a spirit being because you know when we're educating we think we're only educating the person that's right in front of us that needs that advice or that teaching or learning how to soul. However, we know there are spirits around us the whole time. So we are teaching not only the person we can see, because I can't see nothing that doesn't have material body to it, but we're also teaching all the spirits that are pre pre blah, present, watching what we're doing, watching what that spirit is learning, there's a whole bunch of people. You're never, ever, ever alone. Even when you think you are. The gradual divinization of the spirit. Isn't that beautiful? As we learn something new and we apply ourselves to keeping that as a permanent knowledge in our brains, we become more divine. Because we get closer to Christ, to what Christ was. And then um, delivery to the students, the responsibility of self-teaching. Because we can only take people so far, right? They have to act on it first. They probably have to act forcibly. Let's say you tell a child you have to share. The first time he shares, he's going to say, yeah, okay. <laughs> The second time he shares, he realized that sharing was cool because the guy played back with him. So his guy like, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, let's share. But then he realizes that that's actually a cool thing because as he's sharing with somebody else, what's happening? Somebody else is watching that he's sharing and is doing what? Sharing back with him. So, okay, he's now sharing his little car and the guy, which is red, and the guy's sharing back with him the blue car that is his favorite color. So it's all a progress. I'm talking three times, but we know it's seven times 70, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't think that in three goals, we're going to get it done. However, the first few are going to be against my will. Yeah, or whatever. And slowly it will become a habit. So be in synergy with this law of evolution. And that goes right into what Pablo was saying today, that you have to work 12, I mean 24 hours a day. By being in synergy with everything that is happening around you, you will not spit in the streets, you will not litter, you will not be unpolite to people knowingly, because sometimes it happens because we're still imperfect. But when you are alert, even if you are burning inside, you will shut up and you just stay there. So these little things are what teach others how to behave and how to act. So the principles of education, just as a remembrance, because I'm sure everybody knows number one is love, number two is love, number three is love, and about number 11 is freedom and equality of individuals, because we all the same. Naturality, strange word for a principle of education, right? But everything that happens is natural, the good and the bad, the fantastic and the lame. It's all natural. Because if it really has to be forced, it wouldn't happen because we don't have that power to make things happen. So even though you're talking about a bad subject, 
like yesterday when I heard it, or the day before, whatever, when I heard that they killed the three guys, I told my dad, you know what? It does make me sad. And of course, he's got his opinion that killing is the solution. And I said, yeah, but what kills me is not that we killed them, because unfortunately, example that you will be punished is what's going to prevent some more people from doing so but is that we still have to resort to a certain violence in order to show people that there are consequences. And that's the hard part. You know, so you have to understand that there are things that are necessary. However, you have to understand that we should be already evolved enough to understand that that shouldn't be necessary. Action, because if we just sit there, it ain't gonna happen. And integral education not only teach them how to be a philosopher or doctor or a lawyer but also how to be charitable and how to be given and how to be a friend and how to listen because children don't have time to listen they're always so busy buddies right the new era oh my god this is the hardest part because that's when science something that i don't understand meets religion which my heart fully understands so we got to look for our handicaps some people will be weaker on the religion side some people will be weaker on the science side you have to find your balance in order to understand what the new era is going to be for you you have to understand both sides of the coin so the knowledge of God's law with their relationship of the world of matter. What does that mean to men? Because right now, as a spirit, you may understand it. However, you also, you need to understand all the sides of the coin. What does that matter to me as an integral being on the spirit? And what is God's law? which is easy to understand why God's law matters to me as a spirit, but why does God's law matter to me as a man? And vice versa, why does man's law matter to me as a spirit, as an integral being? It's all intertwined, remember? So spiritism will become a general belief and will mark a new era in the history of human race because it belongs to the natural order of things. And because the time has come for it to be ranked among the branches of human knowledge, it will nevertheless have to withstand a good amount of violent attacks. Spirit's Book, Question 798. The New Era is also um, entangle, uh, entangles ideas are only transformed in the long run. Never suddenly, remember? Mm -hmm. Land the toy, land the toy, land the toy. So seven times, 70 times, you have to go through that motion in order to become natural. Spiritism progresses, progress will be more rapid than of Christianity. Strange, huh? Mm -hmm. Because Christianity itself that opens the road for it furnish its basis and support and spiritism has only to build up so for people to believe in christ and believe in one god was really hard but now that had ha that has been established spiritism just have to build on that strong basis that already exists Herculano Piri says, the spiritist education we be, will be our contribution to the new world of tomorrow. Being at the same time our pay to the countries that have given us their men, their culture, their genius, so we could grow under the lights of the Southern Cross. Now, how do we teach about all this. We can use theater, role playing, and I'm not talking about teachers. A parent, an aunt can do any of these little things at home. So, role playing is you want to understand what your child thinks about you? Tell your child to be you while you're them, because at the same time, you will watch them, what they perceive of you, 
they will watch you as what you perceive of them. Isn't that an interesting lesson? If you think about it, it's extremely important because what we do and how we do it sometimes don't match. Some of you must have seen the video of the engagement where I was speechless and I talk a lot. And after seeing the video, I was like, my God, was that me? I didn't think I would look so ecstatic. And there I was, absolutely speechless. Mm -hmm. So what we think we're doing in our mind and what we're actually doing is not the same sometimes. So play, you can utilize a play that's already written as well as making a play up. Announcements. Bring a child that is well verbiaged and reads well enough in order to do here and talk to the public and do a uh, programmed speech, which announcements, that's what they are. They don't have to ad lib anything, pretty much. It's already written for them. It's something that they can do. And it brings out things inside of them that they didn't know they had, including fear. I'm not just saying good things, but as you expose those things, you can start dealing with them right social activities uh becerra has to offer caravan of love and feeding the needy we also have um things here that um uh, we do which i think most of you know which is the friday activity that we do which is the food pantry uh, of course some of these things are written generically because i'm presenting this speech in other centers that have activities with other names <laughs> And remember, you don't only need to be involved in charitable activities in the center. It's important to involve yourself here because this is your community. However, if what your child will engage with is some science fair and he can get volunteer hours there, please go. If he can engage with nature and go pick up garbage on the beaches and do those programs, please go. Don't get yourself stranded to just the ones we have here although understand the importance of participating on the charitable activities we have here in your community. Real stories. So bring topics that are real and current to your conversations and classes. Be prepared to answer the questions related to the subject. If you're going to bring up, so actually, you need to be informed because maybe if you don't bring up the subject, a child will so be informed because you may have to answer on it although you're not the one bringing it right related to the heroes and their icons many years ago Pokemon was really big some of the adults may remember that and I had to find a Pokemon that I was related to spiritism because the children would not hear of any other thing and there is he's not very famous his name is Locario but there was one, and guess what? It was like, whoa, then that's cool. I think I can listen to you now. You know what I'm saying? So it's got to be relative to them. <laughs> Cultivate spirituality. That is extremely important. It's imperative to promote that we are spiritual beings. That once the spirit realizes that it's eternal and understands its power, persistence and trust will automatically automatically work for its transcendence the idea of divinity we become better we become more divine immortality that it doesn't end when you say bye bye go into a coffin or whatever it is that happens to your body you know it doesn't end there as soon as a child understands that, you will have a child that will not be involved in suicide. Because it will know it won't end. So it will never think about that. And then the moral understandings. You know, you have to be good. It's not because I'm telling you you have to be good. It's because your project of life should be bettering yourself every day. Right? Remember, progress. So in conclusion... We talked about the difference of progress, the acts that will take you on to being better, and then evolution, the step you've actually taken after you've taken all the steps on trying to be better. When you finally decided you understand the flavor of kiwi, 
<laughs> the law of progress, which evolves and it's mandatory to all of us and we are all here ready to progress as spirit beings. All the facts and education that we just touched upon, which are many, the new era and the necessity of outdo ourselves on teaching others. And all those children we talked about, even though they may be 75 or 90 years old, remember? And then the many techniques. And I just showed a few techniques. There are many more. I could have gone into visual, into practical, into living. There are many more. So as you instruct yourselves on how can you better make other people understand the things that you're trying to teach, whatever it is, you will learn yourself how you can teach yourself how to do things as well. Because as you're learning to teach, you're learning too. So to close this up, I wanted to say that the spiritist pedagogy is not intended to take over the world, only to offer the world a renewed view of education and student. Herculano Pires. So if you join me into sitting in a relaxed position. As the voice from IT changed my slide. Absorb all the thoughts that are rushing through your mind after so much information that was given today. Clear your mind and first and foremost, let's first thank the spiritual realm that governs this house, that allows us to bring in the word and enlighten more minds and awaken more souls for this very delicate subject, which is the education of souls for eternity. Eternity sometimes seems like a long time, however, is so necessary for our progress, ending in our own evolution. Let's deepen our vibrations, asking the mentors of this house to prepare the people that are in the passive room. And to prepare ourselves to encounter this beautiful week that is ahead of us full of opportunities for teachings and learnings. And hope that tomorrow will be a better day than today. So be it. <laughs>